what's the next best thing to having a human geologist on Mars? How about a rover with 10 extraordinary instruments? The Mars Science Laboratory, today on Planetary Television. Earth unique in the solar system? The only place where life could have taken hold? Or could such an environment have existed at some point on Mars, where water and key chemical building blocks could have come together in a way that could support the smallest, most basic forms of life? The Mars Science Laboratory rover, NASA's new robotic vehicle for exploring Mars, is heading to the Red Planet to find the answer. So, how does a robotic rover try to find answers? By copying what its human creators do. On Earth, geologists might check out a map, drive out to a remote location, and hike to a possibly hard to reach spot where they could see layers of ancient rocks, like in the walls of a dried up riverbed or the sides of a canyon. MSL is an incredible rover because it has an amazing ability to move around, and we're going to need that because we're going to have to go into some tough to reach places. It can travel at least 20 kilometers, probably further. We're going to be able to land in a safe place and go beyond that to where the really rough rocks are, which is where all the good geologic clues are that tell us about the early environmental evolution of Mars. In the hunt for evidence of life on Mars, geologists first have to determine if certain conditions were right. If the rock record shows evidence of certain minerals and organic molecules, the chemical building blocks on which all life is based. So what MSL would be able to do is it would, it would drive up to this outcrop and uh, it has a drill that's about a, a centimeter in diameter and we would instruct the rover to, to drill a hole in the rock and then the powder that comes out of that would then travel back into the rover and, uh, and it would be split and it would go into the two instruments that would analyze the, the powder. One would give us information on mineralogy and the other one would give us information if there were any organic molecules in here. It's really as close as we can get to putting a field geologist on Mars. And like any good geologist, the Mars Science Laboratory rover carries a full pack of gear for the trip. On Earth, geologists use tools like compasses, rock hammers, and hand lenses to explore the environment and study the rocks. They might even do a simple acid test to see what the rocks are made of. The Mars Science Laboratory rover carries a whole laboratory with it wherever it goes. It's much bigger than any rover sent before, about the size of a car. That means it can carry a lot more advanced instruments. We've got a laser called ChemCam, and we're going to be able to look at rocks that are on the walls of, of outcrops or in positions where we can't, we can't really get to it. And we'll be able to shoot this laser beam and look at the light that's reflected back to us and get some sense of the chemical composition of things that we might not be able to touch. All these capabilities will help scientists understand the history of these remote areas. One of the questions that people most often ask is whether or not life is unique in the universe in our solar system. And the short answer to that is we don't really know. And the only way we're ever going to figure this out is to leave our own planet and go explore other solar systems as well as planets within our own solar system. Could Mars have had an environment capable of supporting life? The Mars Science Laboratory rover is taking all the tools it needs to try to solve this mystery. If all goes well, at the end of its journey, the rover will have taken us to places on Mars we could never reach before, given us a glimpse back into the history of the planet, and maybe even shown us another planet where life could survive. The 
Mars Science Laboratory will begin science operations soon after landing in the summer of 2012. The overall sci scientific goal of the mission is to explore and quantitatively assess a local region on Mars' surface as a potential habitat for life, past or present. The MSL rover is designed to carry 10 scientific instruments and a sample acquisition, processing and distribution system. The various payload elements will work together to detect a stu and study potential sampling targets with remote and in situ measurements to acquire samples of rock or soil and, al and analyze them on board analytical instruments and to observe the environment around the rover. The primary mission will last one Mars year of approximately two Earth years. Assessment of present habitability requires an evolution, evaluation of the characteristics of the environment and the process that influence it from microscopic to regional scales and the comparison of those characteristics uh, with what is known about the capacity of life as we know it to exist in such environments. Determination of past habitability has the added requirement of inferring environments and processes in the past from observation in the present. Such assessments require the integration of a wide variety of chemical, physical, and geological observations. The MSL mission has four primary science objectives to meet the overall habitability assessment goal. The first is to assess the biological potential of, of at least one target environment by determining the nature and in inventory of organic carbon compounds, searching for the chemical building blocks of life, and identifying features that may record the actions of biological relevant processes. The second objective is to characterize the geology of the landing region at a, an appropriate spatial scale by investigating the chemical, isotopic, and mineral, uh, mineralogical composition and surface and near surface materials, and interpreting the processes that have formed rocks and soils. The third objective is to investigate planetary processes of relevance to past habitability, including the role of water, by assessing the long time scale atmospheric evolution and determining the present state distribution and cycling of water and CO2. The fourth objective is to characterize the broad spectrum of surface radiation including galactic cosmic radiation and solar proton events and secondary neutrons. These observations and measurements will individually be a great scientific interest and importance but the overall scientific goal of assessing present and past habitability of environments at the visited sites will only come from their comprehensive integration and this is consequently a key of the proposed mission. Each of the ten instruments contributes to a multiple science objectives and most of the science objectives involve contributions from several instruments. Because of the cross-instrument nature of the science return much of the tactile operations and science assessment will be coordinated through the science theme groups as discussed in uh, information later on. Strategic science operations, data analysis, and dissemination of results will be, will be integrated by and coordinated through the MSL Project Science Group. Tune in on a future episode when we go into further detail on the instruments that make the Mars Science Laboratory so extraordinary. We'd like to thank you for watching. This is your host, Errol Coder, and you have been watching Planetary Television.